I've got a little field just up here. I'm gonna go find me a tree and set again, sit and watch it for a little bit. One thing that I always do when I'm hunting, when I'm gonna set for a spot in a little while, rake the leaves away from the tree. A lot of times it sounds like a deer making a scrape or something. I don't think anything about it, a squirrel playing in the leaves. But this way, if I have to move just a little bit, I can move quiet. I like this spot right here. This big old pretty bottom. Tucked back in the brush just a little ways. But I still got great visibility of the field. There's some deer right there. Got some does out in the field. These does are still coming to the food plots. When they get out in this open, they get nervous and edgy because they know the bucks are coming to find them. They're constantly looking around, waiting for a buck to come out and harass them. Here comes a deer. That's a buck. Good buck coming out right here. Good buck. He's definitely a mature buck. Big old thick barrel chested. I want to get a better look at him. Oh, I think I'm gonna pass him. That's a great deer. But it's only the second day of our hunt. I may regret it, but I'm gonna let that deer go. Oh, let's just enjoy him. It's not every day you get to watch a four and a half year old eight pointer of that size. Boy, that's a great deer. But the thing about it is, is that deer in another year could put on up to 15 inches of horn. I knew there'd be a good buck use this field. And I may regret not shooting him, but it was awful fun to watch him out in that field. I got a couple other places in mind. Let's go check them out. As we continued on with our hunt, we kept seeing good deer and a lot of does and chasing activity, red activity that you would expect to see in Missouri in the middle of November. Here comes a deer running right here. It's a buck. It's a 10 pointer. I know that deer too. That's a good young 10 pointer. That's the deer we do not want to shoot. That is a great young deer. That's the kind of jigs you want in this place right there. Have that dude at two and a half years old. He's just out running around cruising, looking for does. I hope he finds some, because I'd love to have him breeding on this property. I'm glad to see he made it through open the weekend. You know, we've had an awesome hunt so far, and as it goes on, the rut just seems to keep getting more in-depth and more in-depth, and the, and the bigger bucks are starting to chase does. It started out early in the week that the small bucks were out doing the checking, and now the bigger bucks are out doing the checking, you know? So it's getting further along, further along, and, the, and these big deer are up on their feet and moving, so it's just a matter of time before we kill something big. There's does out on that ridge right now feeding out there. This time of year, with the does out there like that, there's gotta be a buck around close. Right there, right there, coming out of the woods, coming out of the woods, big buck. He's a shooter. I gotta get over to a tree to get a rest. Good deer. All right, he's coming right at us. He's quartering to me. He's gonna work down that timber line. I'm gonna get a shot. Once that deer disappeared down in the low spot, I knew it was just a matter of time before he come back out right there in front of us and he never did, and we sat there and waited for almost a half an hour 
knowing that he should have come out by now if he was going to. And, and when he didn't come out, you know, it was time to get back up on our feet and go try to find another deer somewhere else. He's obviously ducked back in that timber. He'd have been out. Oh well. He was a good buck. That was exciting. You know, watching this hunt, if you could learn one thing from it, it's the fact of preseason scouting, early season scouting. Get out there, get some truck hammers, put them up, know the deer that are on your place and know what to expect so that you know what a good mature shooter is, what you know what a big buck is, because it's gonna be different every place you go. So, you know, while we were out there, you never know what deer is gonna show up during the rut. If a good mature, great buck would have showed up, by all means we would have put him down. But we had a hit list of deer that we were after, and that's where truck hammers really come into play. And they allow you to be more patient, allow you to be a better hunter, and allow you to pass young two and a half, three and a half year old deer to get to those mature deer because you know they're there. This is absolutely amazing walking through these leaves right now, not making a sound. There's an old grown up brushy field up here on top, and we're going to get up here just where I can see it and sit down and watch it just for a little bit. This old brushy field right here is awesome because there's timber on both sides of it and the deer can cross it. They don't feel exposed because it's grown up. It's the type of place that you'd see a big buck come out of. There comes a deer right there. He's got horns. Pretty good buck. He's definitely not a shooter, but I'm going to have some fun with him. I'm going to see what these deer will do. He's going to try to circle down here below us and get our wind. He knows we should be able to see a deer. He's going to wind us any time right there. There he goes. <laughs> Was that awesome or what? We come out here and seen this buck, and I knew this buck because I'd seen several, several pictures of him. And he's just a three and a half year old 10 pointer. He needs another year on him. I'm going to put everything up and pack up and go try another spot. Right up over this rise right here, Don's got a food plot planted. I'm going to slip up there and see if I can see anything out in it. We really hunted hard and we battled the conditions, the rain and the weather that came in. But the last evening of the hunt, as it always happens, one of the bucks that we had on our hit list comes out, the devil buck comes out, and when he comes out, I see those brows stuck off to the side. And I said, that's our deer. That's him right there. There's a buck out there with him down. And that's definitely a devil buck. I can see his brows laid off to the side. All right, he's gonna work back down that field. Here he goes, headed towards them two spikes that are fighting right there. Before he gets to the timber. One last time he's gonna stop. That's why I'm gonna shoot him.
Oh yeah, he's hit hard. He's hit hard. He's not gonna make it far. That's a good deer. That's the devil, baby. I smoked him. He went in here somewhere. I marked him just this side of that little hump right there, somewhere. Right there's a white rump showing. There he is. Oh yeah, he's down. Let me get this thing unloaded. Whew, what a deer. What a Southwest Missouri whitetail I have right here. This is the devil buck. Look at these brows, how they peel off to the side like that. Look like little devil horns. That was one of the deer on the hit list. Man, I love hunting this country. This is what I grew up hunting. I live in Southwest Missouri. I'm hunting Southwest Missouri. These rolling hills, acorn trees everywhere, fescue fields that we plowed up, put some food plots in, got good clover food plots. What a great deer. Don's gonna be proud of this guy. Got a name, got him out of the herd. What a great mature buck. I can't wait to get it back and show him to Don. Harvesting this buck was a small part of the actual experience of this entire trip. You know, coming up here and being with my good friend Don, uh, his, his family, we had a great time and sitting there and playing with Bo and, and just having a blast with the family. And it, you know, what an awesome hunt to be up with good friends on a wonderful piece of property where you can go out and see deer every time you go set. And it just absolutely couldn't have been any better.